yeah. So, uh, so thank you very much, Isabel, uh, for joining us today to give us the lecture for our students. And I'm very sorry uh, that our little one waked up. So I tried to put her to the bed, but she waked up. So uh, she's the one who's disturbing. And uh, so Isabel and me did our PhDs together in, uh, in 2013 to around seven, uh, 2017 in University of Queensland, Australia. And, um, so, and then she was uh, more towards the sustainable development and engage with the UN. And uh, so she's an uh, emerging leader in international sustainable development, sustainability science policy and practice. And uh, uh, she's very uh, into the sustainable development with the uh, working UN and uh, in fostering in 2030 agenda for sustainable development. So now uh, she's working as a, a research fellow in University of Queensland uh, in Australian Institute of Business and Economics. So um, thank you very much, uh, Isi, for coming today with all the busy schedules. And uh, I think uh, there are so all these students are environmental science honor students. So they are in their uh, next, so yeah, the third year. So next year they are going to do their honors research as well. Um, yeah, so I gave the co-host to the uh, Dino Rush, he's the assistant lecturer for this particular course. So in case if I lost my connection or something happened, so she will uh, have the co-host. Shall I make you as a co-host also? Um, is it? Make uh, you a co-host. If, if you don't mind, then that's fine, that's okay. Yeah, just in case. Okay, then, yeah. So then, it, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it's up to, uh, to you. So you can start. Well, Deva, thank you so much for the invite and, and thank you so much to all your students uh, for this opportunity to have this lecture, give this lecture on, on international sustainable development and action in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, I understand that you are, um, uh, you will be engineers uh, sometime soon. You are, uh, studying towards engineering and the Faculty of Science at the University of Colombo. Um, so this uh, particular presentation is, is very aligned with some of the topics that you might be uh, dealing with later on in your um, career. And, um, and any questions, any comments you might have later on, please just let me know. So I'll uh, start the presentation. We're going to leave all comments and questions at the end, at the very end of the, of the presentation. Um, okay. Well, the presentation is titled Action in the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals Overcoming, Overcoming Global Challenges. I mean, there is more than ever, there is a, a global call by the international community and in how we, uh, how different stakeholders and we as academics, you as, pot as uh, potential professionals, how we can all contribute and collaborate to achieve the sustainable development goals. Um, as Devan uh, said before, um, I've been working for the, UNA, for the United Nations system since 2014. I've, work for several organizations um, in in Thailand at UNSCAP. Uh, then I moved to Africa for a deep uh, what I work for the United Nations Development Program. And more recently I engaged with the um, United Nations University Institute for the Advanced Study of Sustainability. Um, and this particular presentation is uh, focus on a piece of research that we conducted at the United Nations University Institute for the Advanced Study of Sustainability. Okay, so the outline of the presentation, I'll let you uh, know a little bit more about my academic and professional background, um, what the research that we conducted at the United Nations University, what it consists of, and uh, what are those you know, further um, 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 research gaps. And um, I'll let you know 
I'll let you know more a bit about the case study locations and the methods and research design that help us um, drive the research until su successful completion. Um, and more importantly, we are going through the research findings. Uh, this was a more a, a very large research project that involved um, all four regions. Um, so we did some field work in Americas, um, in Africa, in um, in Asia Pacific, and we also did some conduct and some some um, um, interviews in in Europe. So uh, why I'm here, and I think that's the question that probably Devan answered before, why I was invited as a guest lecturer at the University of Colombo, uh, basically because of my background is um, on sustainable development and sustainability science. So sustainability is becoming an emerging science, and as such, uh, it involves um, different parts of, of uh, social, uh, environmental, and economic as, as, um, arenas. So um, I'm not only a kind of academic, I've been working at various policy roles at the United Nations. I've also worked as a consultant for the private sector. So I've been in that intersection and also for civil society organizations. So I've been working in that intersection among different sectors across different regions. So I uh, had appointments in um, as advisor and educator uh, when I worked in South America and then in Africa, I, I worked more as an international advisor for the UN, as I said before, and um, recent, more recently in Japan as a scientist and also now I'm in Australia. In Australia where I'm conducting research on sustainability and sustainable development. So, um, my background research and my current research has helped me to connect with a large network of stakeholders uh, from governments to international organizations, private sector, higher education institutions. So my research sits in this space, right? And, and, and connects those four different um, stakeholders. When I moved to Japan, I was very interested in exploring what was happening at the global international level uh, with those networks, how those different networks from the private sector, civil society organizations, um, um, academia, um, higher education institutions uh, were collaborating or not uh, towards the achievement of the sustainable development goals. And um, so, um, as I said, uh, we conducted various, um, we applied different um, methodologies, very, various methodological techniques to come up with uh, research findings. So this is the research. It was, this was in under the, um, under the United Nations University, as I said before, Institute for the Advanced Study of Sustainability. Uh, the main problem that we found is that each one of those key players, those key stakeholders, uh, had uh, presented uh, various issues, and this was uh, something that I had already explored in my past research. So the government, for example, at the government level, there is uh, we found there is lack of resources towards the achievement of uh, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And for those of you who haven't heard about uh, the United Nations Sustainable Goals, Development Goals is is this is a new an, an agenda for sustainable development. This is the United Nations Agenda for Sustainable Development, and um, the mandate is to achieve those goals by 2030. Um, so in terms of the government, we found that the lack of resources, particularly in developing countries, me coming from a developing country, for example, um, I experienced that, you know, there are issues in terms of lack of governance and issues in terms of institutional, lack of institutional capacity and weak institutional capacity at the government level. And that has um, an impact on how the government levels at the local um, 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 state and, and national level achieve or collaborate to achieve the sustainable development goals. There is also in terms of international organizations and civil society organizations, we found that there are too many capacity building initiatives, too, there's too much training going on and on sustainable development, but 
sometimes what happens with the training is that it becomes irrelevant, particularly in the context of um, developing countries. Um, there are also governance issues regarding uh, the alignment of uh, the UN agenda, the global agenda, and the local level. So, I mean, uh, we have at the local level, we have something that we uh, uh, something called uh, development plans, where we have all the like is, is the guide to um, to move forward any region, any town. Um, very often, we find that that development plan is not aligned with a strategic international development mandate, such as the United Nations Development Goals. Or vice versa, we want to just pretty much take that international agenda, such as the, the Sustainable Development Goals, and just apply that to the local context without any um, without any context uh, or understanding of the context. At the private sector, we found that there is a lot of corporate interest in in in, in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals if there's always a condition if that's profitable for the private sector. Most of you might be work, might, when you're finished, you'll be working for the private sector and you see you know, the private sector is more in terms of you know, financial thinking of uh, in terms of financial return. So if they do see that there is financial return, then it's very difficult for them to engage in, in, in achieving and in, in, in implementing an international agenda. Um, now what has been happening, we have seen a, a shift in terms of uh, financing the sustainable development goals. There is an emerging area that is called sustainable finance. And um, there are various methods and mechanisms, impact investing, um, green bonds, and so on. Those are mechanisms that uh, the private sector um, uses to um, target these international mandates. In terms of higher education institutions, and well, you, you are studying at the University of Colombo, what happens with the universities? I'm not saying this is all universities, but this, this is, a, we took a good sample of universities all over the world. Um, we found that some of the uh, curriculums at uh, the university level are irrelevant in terms of um, achieving the sustainable development goals. Some of them are, are not aligned with international mandates. Um, there is also lack of resources, um, in particularly in universities in developing countries, and um, in this um, uh, this course, I mean, this idea of sustainable development goal is 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 good in, in theory, but not in practice. And we found out found found that out in in we found that in 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 regions such as Africa or Latin America, where there are so many present needs, or even Southeast Asia, um, where there are so many present needs, basic needs that need to be met uh, before engaging in um, engaging in, in, in achieving or, or um, implementing an international agenda. So these are some of the questions that um, guided our research. So first of all, what we did is that we explored the global trends of um, international sustainable development, and we had a focus on education. So we we took the uh, university as the center of that multi-stakeholder collaboration. So the university was the center, and then we have private sector, governments, uh, civil society organizations, and other stakeholders. Um, the second question is, um, we asked in this research was, um, what are the factors that hinder or foster that collaboration between the university and all their stakeholders? And the third question um, is, what are the priority areas or SDGs, sustainable development goals, uh, that, uh, that those stakeholders in a specific region consider uh, valuable for, for the local context? And at the end, we also have um, um, focused with this same question about the priority SDG areas. We also ask that question with a gender, um, well, through a gender lens. So because we wanted to find out what what was happening for in terms of gender and, and women. So case study locations. Well, uh, field field work. I mean, field work was conducted in Japan in Australia and Zambia. Um, we later did some interviews in Peru. Um, and, um, but 
We also conducted online interviews and online surveys in other regions such as Europe. What we did is that we use, um, I'm just gonna put it back, okay. What we did is that uh, we use the United Nations Network, RC Network, which is, uh, those are regional centers of expertise. And, um, and uh, we look at, um, we selected the cases, those case studies in which we found that there was a lot of um, um, challenges in terms of um, um, achieving the sustainable development goals in locations obviously that display that um, multi-stakeholder um, that complexity in terms of multi-stakeholder collaboration this was on photos from okoyama japan um, and um, as you see well these are some of the focus groups um, this is was in western sydney uh, we also did focus groups and interviews and uh, this was in lusaka in zambia and there are quite a few more photos but so I leave it there. Um, this is the research design that uh, guided the research. So we have a, a global context. Um, this is um, a framework called the Sustainable Livelihood Framework. Maybe some of you have heard of it. It consists of five components. Um, so there is a framework. Um, there is a global context. Um, according to, to the literature, this global context has an impact on, on governance. So governance is that relationship among different stakeholders. And these both the global context and governance, they have an impact at the community level. And this, according to the literature, all these three, three components um, have sustainable or, or deliver sustainable um, development outcomes. Uh, we use various uh, research methods, such as case studies, individual interviews, uh, focus groups, and surveys. So what we found, these are some of the research findings that we got. Um, so what we found, for example, in Asia Pacific, uh, we found that some of the challenges at the moment, some of the gaps are um, zero hunger. So zero hunger is uh, zero hunger, good health and well-being, industry and um, innovation infrastructure, reducing inequalities, peace, justice and strong institutions are gaps at the moment. So identify that most of the interviewees, most of the participant, participant stakeholders, they agree that these are SDGs and need, they still need to be targeted. Still, we need to do some more work to achieve those. That doesn't mean that specifically in a specific context those have been achieved, but uh, this was more in terms of ge in general terms, this is what is missing at the moment. So what we also found in Asia Pacific is interesting, like Asia Pacific and Europe, uh, what we found, we found commonalities and some of the commonalities were um, that um, Asia Pacific and Europe, they have an, they do an emphasis on, on uh, environmental SDGs, right? Whereas for example, Africa and some parts in, in, in America, in, in the Americas, for example, South America, they do more more emphasis. That they have a focus, a strong focus on uh, on social is uh, social related SDGs, and we're gonna see that later. So you see, this is Africa, and this is the, these are the gaps that we found in Africa. So there are too many. Uh, there are six, 17 SDGs in total, and you see how many are still um, are still considered a challenge. So it means that Africa has other uh, priorities at the moment, and it's not a priority in most of the agendas of the universities that we consulted and as stakeholders. Um, this is not a priority, and it's evident. Uh, what is happening in, in Africa, and it's interesting, is that there are so many um and that's also and that's 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 this that's the case for latin america as well and is that there are basic needs that need to be met right there is a lot of hunger there is a lot of poverty and people are more concerned um about uh, meeting those basic needs right so Sometimes when it comes to the time to implement this, for example, at the government level, or implementing this as the case of the, uh, the, uh, the um, even private sector or through academia, it's very difficult to engage with that because, I mean, there are other needs that need to be met first. And you, you're coming from, a, from, from Sri Lanka, well, I come from Colombia, my background is Colombian. Um, it, it, we, 
we can witness that firsthand, you know, in everyday life. You can, there's all the needs that need to be met before engaging with an international agenda. So people are not th thinking about international agenda, international mandates when, you know, there is a lot of hunger and there is a lot of uh, poverty um, just um, out there. What are the challenges and gaps in Europe? And you see, compared to Africa, obviously the challenges the challenges are less. But what's been happening in Europe in Europe is that there is less focus on social issues, right? So there is a lot of focus on on environmental issues. But if you see all these SDGs, you know, poverty, hunger, uh, decent work and economic growth, reduce inequalities, um, uh, partnerships for the goals, and those are more the social and governance issues. And and the need to be target, right? And that's not, that's not commonality that we found with Asia Pacific. There's a lot of emphasis in Europe on environmental issues, but the social aspect is still a problem. Also, what we found in this research, and very interesting, is that reducing inequalities at the gene number 10 uh, was considered a uh, commonality across all four regions. So this is very interesting, um, so that reducing, Inequalities is, is, is something that has, needs to be targeted and is, is considered a priority across regions. Finally, the Americas, um, uh, they considered as challenges and gaps, these three SDGs. Uh, there could be more, but for the, with the specific example that we um, had, um, we found that no poverty, gender equality, and life without water um, are the three key uh, priorities at the moment. That the three key uh, SDGs that need to be targeted, and uh, and those are the three key challenges. What is happening? So this answers. So uh, as you see, you well, remember the questions that I mentioned before. So the first question was to uh, explore the the trends, right, in terms of interesting sustainable development. What is happening at the global level? So we already answered that question with the um, gaps and challenges that I showed you before across uh, regions. The second question was about the limiting and fostering factors. Um, the limiting and fostering factors, what limits and what foster multi-stakeholder collaboration um, towards the achievement of the SDGs. And one of the issues is that, for example, in, in, in terms of uh, um, Asia, in, in Asia Pacific and Europe, is that there is a lot of uh, emphasis on environmental issues, right? Um, overlooking other issues that are equally important, such as social issues, but well, is, is, is probably that's, that's, that's a priority, right, at, at the local level. Um, another issue that we found is that uh, financial resources are limited, and that happens everywhere, even in Europe, where we might think, might think that they might have a lot more resources. Uh, that's becoming a challenge as well, particularly in academia and higher education institutions. Um, also, well, um, again, you know, there are governance and efficiency issues uh, towards the achievement of SDGs. Um, some of the interviews says, uh, said, well, people are busy, they have other priorities, they have different timing and so, that's, and, and so on. And another issue is uh, um, that we found, another limiting factor is that um, Again, that environmental issue is not given a priority, but that's happening in the Americas in Africa. It's interesting because in, in, in Europe, as I said, and in Asia Pacific, it's given it's it's been given a priority, but uh, in those in Africa and in the Americas it's not given a priority in both regions, both stakeholders, participant stakeholders in the research, they complain that you know it should be the social aspect should be given more priority in in Europe and, and, and the Americas, for example. Um, they said, well, the environmental issues should be given priority in the Americas. So it's interesting how different perspectives um, show up. Um, lack of alignment is why, again, lack of alignment between that local context, what is happening at the local level, and also what is happening at the international level. There is, a, we need a more alignment with the international priorities and, and local priorities. And in terms of fostering factors, well, there's political will. That's what, um, that's what we found. So at the government level, we, we found that there are, um, there are governments that are willing to 
invest in sustainable development goals that the United Nations is working in partnership with private sector, with international organizations, with uh, civil society organizations at the local level. Um, so there is this political will to, to implement those. Um, there are structured programs, particularly, for example, in academia and higher education institutions. There are structured programs that um, are um, have been developed um, mainly to implement and to action those the sustainable development goals, and um, and people within organizations and uh, at uh, different sectors, uh, academia, private sector, government uh, institutions. They're willing to collaborate and they're willing to uh, uh, move forward the international agenda. So it's pretty much these are some of the findings uh, that we got. Um, this is some of the reference from the uh, research, some of the journal articles. Um, these two, um, these research findings are also they were um, um, documented in a in a journal article. Um, that uh, in a journal article and it's collection in the global goals um, in 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 um, in education and in education practice and science so this and uh, you can find that in sustainability science in the journal sustainability science uh, recently I also got a book published by Springer in which we collaborate with different um authors uh, from different locations and how we can better achieve the sustainable development goals so we have a chapter devoted for each one of the goals and uh, we also provide um readers with um specific recommendations and how they can how each sdg can be action can be implemented I also have an invite for you, all of you, especially for some of the women in the in the program. There is, um, uh, uh, I lead the the exceptional women sustainability network. This is a network for women. Men are also included, so it's not exclusion. It's, it's not uh, discriminatory. So this is for women. Just go to eWisely.org. We have a magazine. You are welcome to write um, articles. Uh, opinion articles on the link to sustainability, um, women's sustainability and leadership. We also have a scientific journal for women um, um, and also for men uh, dealing with issues on gender, sustainability and leadership. We have case studies. We will also have a podcast series and a, um, a podcast and, um, and, um, and, um, and a TV show where we um, introduce presenters, um, women from all over the world working on different issues around sustainability. So this is uh, a network that we'd be very happy to have you all there. Uh, we invite you to connect through social media. You also can go to the website and you can subscribe to the newsletter. So you get frequent newslet newsletter if you want to connect up uh, and help us with some of the, so some of the uh, issues, the magazines, etc. cetera, uh, just send us an email. Um, we also have uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and LinkedIn and Twitter. So when all the social media is on the website, just so everyone is very welcome to join the network. Mm -hmm. We operate every, every, uh, it's a network, so it's a global network. So we invite people from um, across the world. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, these are my contact details. Uh, well, this is with uh, my previous email, but if uh, but Devan has my emails, so thank you so much for um, for your um, for attending the presentation. If just let me know if you have any questions, any comments, I'll be happy to answer. Okay. I think you are mute, um, Devon. I can hear you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, so thank you, Isabel, for this this nice presentation about this, uh, how the sustainable development goals and this uh, work throughout the different continents in the world. So uh, first, I will go for the students for any questions that you have to clarify or if you have any uh, something more to uh, ask about. Uh, the sustainable development goals or so I, I will start like uh, as you have been in 
working with different continents in the world like and uh, like working with the communities and are you like are you satisfied or happy with whether these co the countries have reached the uh, the sustainable development goals like are we in somewhere that we can reach to the goals at 2030 I think this is, uh, I mean, the issue is, is not if we, I think the issue is not achieving the goals. Uh, this stage is more, and now with all the pandemic, what is happening across the world, I mean, the issue is not achieving the goals, it's the issue is how we are achieving the goals, right? And who are we including, right? Towards the achievement of the goals, right? So are we implementing this international agenda as, in, in an inclusive and sustainable manner as we should, or we're just saying, okay, do we need to meet these targets and and just, you know, let's train or build capacity of uh, X, or, X or Y number of people uh, to meet this target. Uh, we should think about that and you, we should think twice and, and many government and, and, and civil society organizations should think about the way they are contributing to implement the agenda. It's not about how much, in, but how how we are implementing those, and we solve those issues. Those are pretty much governance issues in most of the countries that uh, that we visit, and uh, in most of the interviews that we that we had. So the issue is how we are implementing the, those uh, goals. The issue is not um, um, it's, it's it's not for us. It's not it's not uh, we are targeting the goals by twenty thirty. Yeah. So that's the main issue. Mm. Yeah. And when comparing with the, the developed countries and developing countries, is there like a huge gap or huge uh, contrasting variation in reaching these goals or how they are implementing? Well, the obviously there is a huge difference and, and, and the difference is mainly in terms of governance, right? Uh, developed countries obviously they have more resources they can allocate more resources to achieve the specific uh, targets and, and specific goals but um in developing countries i mean we coming from developing countries we know that you know we like resources and uh, and that makes things difficult right so um so there are issues in terms of um um, um efficiency right in developing countries uh, towards achievement of these goals and that that causes problems another issue that is i think is the most important and it was the case for latin america and for africa we found so most of the respondents and most of the participants they said look we have this international agenda which is nice which is something that we think is i mean we welcome that but there is a huge, there is a, a huge mismatch between that international agenda and what is happening at the local level. So at the local level, we have so many basic needs that need to be met, and we cannot uh, achieve, you know, goals or uh, achieve targets, international targets, when at the local level we have poor governance. Or at the local level, we have so many basic needs that need to be met first. So that's. A governance issue that we need to also to to review um, as uh, in collaboration with different stakeholders to see how um, how we can overcome that because that's becoming a problem in achieving the 2030 agenda. Yeah. So the students, do you have any questions? Okay. Well, then, and, yeah. No, uh, it would be very interesting. Interesting, for example, if and that's something I suggest, and I've been suggesting that uh, in other lectures, is if, for example, the students could start thinking about this international agenda and align the projects that they might be working on, and think about the agenda, think how they can align those projects with uh, the international development goals and how how they can um, achieve some of the targets of those goals. So they can start thinking about that. And later, when they are working as professionals, they have that in mind and they naturally, you know, embrace this uh, this agenda. This is a framework. I mean, it's as any framework, yeah. you can use it you, to map ideas, to, we cannot say this is the only framework, but at least it helps us think 
uh, beyond the technical part, because most of you, well, as environmental um, scientists in the future, environmental yeah. uh, professionals, we might be focusing so much on the technical part of the issue without thinking um, about the big, the bigger picture, right? Yeah. Social, um, environmental, and economic areas of, of, of sustainability or what implies being a, an environmentalist, right? So thinking about this, this, this uh, international agenda will give us more perspective that there are many issues that need to be uh, addressed. And we as professionals or researchers, so um, we can help and contribute. Uh, doesn't matter the scale, if it is small, if, if it is, you know, large, I mean, if it's, we are contributing somehow. Yeah, so the students can, you can keep in on mind, like next year they have their undergraduate research. So if you are interested in, in any area that in sustainable development, and I think uh, ECE will be, um, like we can be a co-supervisor as well, like if they are willing to uh, do a project related sustainable development, like if you, you can keep it in then in your mind also. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, to collaborate in the future for sure. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Any? Yes, we hang up. Do you have any more questions from students? Yes. Yes, madam. Yes. So you mentioned that the curriculum is not not relevant in some higher education institutions about this sustainable development goals. So how how do you expect it? To, how, how do you expect to make it relevant? So what are the things that should be included there to make it relevant to these goals? As I said, I think it's, it's up to us as, as lecturers and also students, right? To include, to start including those in, in projects, right? In small projects, you have thesis coming up, if you have a, 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 a a research project, a small research project coming up. So think about how you can, your research questions or your objectives, how you can align those with the International Sustainable Development Agenda, right? But it's, it's, I think we can start from there and then um, over the time what is happening, there might be other lecturers uh, interested in incorporating that, incorporating that into the lectures as well. And there are universities that are part of the, as I said before, the regional centers of expertise. That's a United Nations University um, um, initiative. And what they do is that they create something called uh, the uh, regional, the, it's a hub basically where the university is the center. And we have stakeholders around the university. So we have private sector, civil society organizations and governments. Um, well, collaborate towards the achievement of the sustainable development goals. That's a larger scale project, right? But we can start very, very small, right? At the, um, at the, at the university, the projects, etc. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes, madam. If uh, that these sustainable development goals, that one of the main problems in Sri Lanka, as I see, that these are uh, the lecturers and maybe the students, they know about this, but the people who are at the local level are not really aware about these goals and stuff. So, what is your suggestion to uh, bring these goals to this local level, the normal people residing in villages and stuff? So, they are not much educated about these goals. So, what is your suggestion about? Uh, just making them aware about them, these goals. Yeah, so there are quite a few best practices uh, that we found, for example, here in Australia, there are civil society organizations that work in collaboration with the university and they offer uh, same, for example, community walks. Community walks, uh, they go through a park or they go through a habitat, a natural reserve, uh, uh, and they, they take um, people in the community, they explain, you know, what the park is about, you know, the trees, uh, and that's targeting life on land, which is um, SDG 15, if I'm not wrong. Um, that's targeting SDG 15, for example, right? So, but they have already that in, in, so they have, they know them, they, they have those targets. Uh, 
but they are including the community as well. And, and well, the community, they, they not necessarily, they don't know that there is an SDG called live on land, but at least they are including towards that, right? Same with, for example, gender equality, right? What you can do as, as, uh, as, as, as a either researcher or, or, or um, a person, for example, a, a government officer, right? Uh, to engage people from the community in issues around gender equality, for example, right? The private sector, for example, they are working on that as well. So the private sector engaging with engaging uh, salary gaps uh, between men and women. So how, what can be done? Um, so it's, it's about rethinking uh, the agenda of, of, of in each one of the sectors and see what can be done, what cannot be done, and how we can target that from, from each sector, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, yes, I want to know the uh, what is the role of women in achieving sustainable development goal? Uh, do we have to face more challenges than uh, men when uh, achieving these goals? I mean, do we have more restrictions and obstacles when achieving these goals than men? That's a very interesting question. And that's a question that I try to answer in most of my research projects. And it's very interesting because indeed we women face more challenges when it comes to the realization of the international agenda. Um, first of all, we, we are given more responsibilities as uh, caregivers, as professionals, as, and that limits sometimes the role of women in, for example, decision-making processes at the government level or at the corporate level, even as researchers as well. So that imposes um, uh, a lot of challenges uh, on women. Um, we also have found in our research that there are um, context-based issues that need to be addressed. Uh, say um, there is a, in, in various uh, regions, such as uh, particularly in, in, in Latin America, Southeast Asia as well, and in Africa, there is a macho culture, right? And, and so that becomes a cultural issue where women actually, um, we are already, you know, under undervalued, you know, culturally we are already here instead of here. And that's, that causes a, a bias. Mm -hmm. and, and, and other people see, see us and see our performance as bias. And, and that has implications as well in achieving the sustainable development goals. So for example, gender equality. There's a lot of issues around gender equality, right? Um, in terms of, uh, of for example, um, um, partnerships for the goals, right? Decision makers, who are the decision makers in most of the, um, in most of the, for example, the, the, the focus groups that we, that we undertook, uh, that we conducted, Most, mostly were men, they were men mostly, right? So obviously, yeah, we face more challenges. Um, not many people have uh, work on that bit and that part of the research and it's, a, it's an area very interesting. Um, but I encourage you, well, those interested in that, uh, to research and to do to explore more of that area because it's, it's very interesting. And, um, and and international organizations such as the UN, the World Bank, um, they have you know uh, come up with various capacity building initiatives with various um, um, ideas and, 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 and how to integrate women and how to integrate those gender issues, or how to address those gender issues toward the achievement of international agendas such as the SDGs. Um, but I think until we just need to solve what is happening at the local level, when we solve our issues locally, uh, then we will be able to target those at, you know, at a larger scale. Um, but it's, it's up to us as well. And we women, we also have the responsibility to do that, right? So you as women, you can also take that responsibility and be, become more empowered and say, look, you know, this is, this is something that I can do to change the world a little bit, to change your, your reality, right? your own reality. So there are things that we can do, definitely, yeah. Like Devan, Devan, for example, just changing your reality, yes, becoming a role model. As a lecturer, she's changing your reality. Yeah, so female, 
train on these issues and, and, and she's a role model. That's, that's a step, you know, those are steps that we need to take. More women need to take those steps to move forward and to help each other to move forward, yeah. Thank you. No, thanks to you. Any other question? Ma'am, uh, especially in Latin America and some uh, countries of Asia, illegal uh, drug is becoming a major social problem. Uh, so is there any global plan to manage this uh, problem in those poor countries? Which is the problem, sorry? Uh, illegal drug uh, use. Ill illegal drugs? Yes. Yeah, well, that, that's uh, happening everywhere, but I think it's more that again that that's more a health problem issue um and that's not only an issue that concerns to well i'm not an expert on that area first of all my expertise on sustainable development sustainability but i can well the sdg number three is on health and well-being right and i can tell you that i've uh, had conversations with the researchers and uh from on, on that health that health uh, um health economics and and public health and um, and they agree that is is an issue is that is is that concerns both developing and developed countries, uh, right? Um, but um, developed countries because there is a high consumption in developing countries there is not such a high consumption as developed countries, but most plantations happen in developing countries. So is is health problem in developed countries and it's also I think a governance issue in developing countries, to how we manage that issue at the local level, right? So it's both ways. So it's not only, it's, it's, there are no uh, people who are guilty, there, there are no, you know, who's, who's, who's more guilty than the other now. It's, I think it's both are accountable and, and, and at the governance level, they need to solve both issues, health and, and government, government management issue themselves, yeah. Thank you, madam. Okay, thanks. Any other question? And also, is it, is it that, uh, like, after we, like, if a country reach, uh, reach a sustainable development goal, so how, how are we going to, like, measure it? Yeah. Is yeah. it this? That's an interesting question, Devan. Yeah. So we try with our research, we identify uh -huh. communities, uh, but we understand that there are, there is a there is a lack of uh, of uh, there is a dearth in, in research in terms of uh, measurement mechanisms. Uh, we come up we came up with some metrics, but for example, the Stockholm Institute they have come up with some metrics as well. So those metrics are available. I think the United Nations they also have their own metrics. Um, but I think at the local level, they pretty much I mean any government institution or uh, civil society organization, even private sector, they can come up with their metrics to measure according to the context, right? Because sometimes what happens with the metrics is that they apply to some context or to the regional or national level, but they don't apply to the local level. So it's okay to come up with metrics that are more aligned with um, with the local context and uh, and developing um, those, I think, is, 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 is very important. But there are quite a few metrics out there to measure the impact of the SDGs. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? So any other questions? I think that's pretty much right. <laughs> and then that says that because of this pandemic, actually, uh, that they, it would be difficult to achieve this goal that the UN has made an announcement like that in 2030. So after 2030, would there be another set of goals or how are we going to achieve the uh, kind of unsettled ones, the unsettled goals? I think it might happen if we don't get to achieve the, the, the sustainable development agenda by 2030, uh, we might to go beyond and it might happen the same that happened in 2015, you know, before it was the Millennium Development Goals 
and now the SDGs, so we might come up with something different to achieve the remaining goals. Yeah, we might come up with a, another agenda, or um, but we'll see. We just have to see what happens um, because at the moment everything is uncertain, right? Under the current pandemic, so it's very uncertain, and then that's up to the international community, right? To come up with that. And priorities are changing as well. What we see with the current pandemic, I mean, probably what we're seeing the SDGs is not necessarily a priority for many countries right now. So, and it's that's very not because it's, it's there are other needs that need to be met first in times of crisis. Yeah. Any question? Any questions? Like. And Isabel, do you think like the, the in developing countries, the governments, are they playing a good role in there or? Uh, governments, I think they just, they, they play their role that they need to play, right? It, which is govern, to govern and, and that implies also developing, coming out with development plans. And as part of development plans, some of them have integrated or have included the sustainable development goals and the goals, uh, sustainable development goals, which is, which is okay. But <clears throat> the major issue is that governance issue, right? If we have the more um, capable government officers to do the job, right, and to come up with um, effective governance mechanisms, effective. Um, um, plans, programs, and projects that actually have an impact uh, at the community level. So that's the major, the, the major issue, I guess. Uh, but they're playing the role as, as, as good as they can, right? And according to the context where they are, uh, in previous research that I've done, what I, we, we have found is that obviously in developing countries that it's more, there are more issues around governance, say um, more issues around um, like uh, allocation of resources, um, more issues around um, um, like effective, you know, the effectiveness of, of governance mechanisms, um, um, qualifying uh, professionals uh, and decision makers. Um, so there are more issues, um, corruption, high levels of corruption as well. So those suspects hinder the capacity of the government from um, achieving an international agenda or any local agenda. And yeah, so that's that's very that has been documented documented on governance research. Um, but yeah, that's mainly the case. Yeah. Students. Do you have any questions or we can say uh, thank you for uh, Dr. EC? Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for the yeah. participation. So we can have a screenshot if you are. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, like if we, Let me see. Uh, reduce, uh, stop this. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to go straight to the beginning. It looks nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let me see. We can put this here. Yeah. Yes, that's better. So we put this one. Oh, we can do this. Well, I don't know. I'm just going to take it like this. Okay. Then, yeah. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Yes, took, took it. I'll send it through. Well, thank you so much, Devon, for the opportunity to share with you, with your students, a bit more about this and the international development agenda. And and we yeah. touch any question, please, just uh, through Devon. Yeah. yeah. And sure. Research. And uh, yeah, let's stay connected. Looking forward. To yes, that. because there are some students that who are writing, good at writing, so they can always write for that the the websites that you have um, shown us. So yeah, so always keep in touch the students. You can anytime you can send an email or you send me an email if you have any questions. And thank you very much, Isi, for joining and giving us the lecture. It's I really appreciate. Thank you.
And nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Thank you all. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.